All right, we're running out of time, so we got to complete the square. And I'm going to try to make this quick because I only have seven minutes left. All right, remember completing the square. First thing I want to do is I want to put brackets around my x values because that's what I want to make to a perfect square triangle, right? So I say f of x equals 2x squared minus x plus 1, right? I want to focus in on these x's. The next thing I need to do is, I remember I told you, you cannot have anything in front of that x squared, right? You gotta get everything out of there. So I'm gonna factor out a two. Now, this doesn't have a two in there, right? This has a one. So if I'm gonna factor out a two, that's kind of like dividing out a two, right? So what this is gonna look like, it's gonna look a little crazy, but it's gonna be x squared minus one half x plus one. Does that make sense? Right, because if you were to do the straight property back, two times x squared is two x squared. Two times negative one half will give you negative one. Mm -hmm. All right. So now I have to do my b over two squared. All right. So I have um, it doesn't you know it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. One half divided by two squared. So one half divided by two is one fourth. One fourth squared is going to be 1 16th. So I have 2 times x squared minus 1 half x, and then I'm going to add 1 16th. Whenever you add 1 16th, you also have to subtract 1 16th, right? Now, I think I actually already did the problem. Make sure when you multiply by 1 16th, though, remember I'm multiplying it 2 times 1 16th. So I need to multiply it 2 over here as well, all right? And then I have this plus one. So now I need to say, well, what is going to be, I need to make this into a, this is a perfect square trinomial, meaning I can write it as a binomial square. Well, so remember that is x plus or minus b over two squared. Well, my b over two was, was one fourth. Well, one fourth times one fourth is one sixteenth, but one fourth plus one fourth is not negative one half. So it has to be x minus one fourth squared. All right. Then over here, I have a minus two over one sixteen can be reduced down to negative one eighth, right? Plus one. Well, to add these two together, I'm going to multiply by. Um, I got to you know put one over one. Multiply by 8 over 8, so I get a negative 1 8 plus 8 over 8. So this is going to give me 7 eighths, if I do my math correct. x equals 2 times x minus 1 4 squared plus 7 eighths. And that would be completing the square. If I wanted to find the vertex, the vertex for this would be a positive 1 4, um, 7 eighths. All right, and for time purposes, I'm not going to show you how to solve, but you know, you can just make that zero. And so, oh, shoot, too much time left. Oh, I got plenty of time. All right, so here's my function, right? You got that. So I wanted to solve, let's say I wanted to find the solutions. So I have f of x equals 2 times x minus 1 fourth squared plus 7 eighths. If I want to find the solutions, find the zeros, you need to make this zero, right? Zero equals 2 times x minus 1 fourth squared plus 7 eighths, right? Well, so you subtract 7 eighths. And the reason why I want to show you this is because this is where so many students make their mistake. Everybody wants to take the square root. Everybody wants to take the square root. Before you can take the square root, you have to undo division of two. So I'm gonna divide by two. Okay, and that's gonna give me a negative 7 sixteenths equals x minus 1 fourth squared. Now we can take the square root of both sides. And I'm left with a negative, whew, square root of negative 7 sixteenths, which isn't going to be very good, equals x. So I'm going to add some imaginary roots. All right, that's plus or minus. 
obviously remember you're gonna have negative, you're gonna have some imaginary roots. Um, I must have made something wrong. Uh, equals x minus one fourth, and then you have to add one fourth um, plus or minus square root of a negative seven sixteenths. I don't remember there being a negative number in there. I'll go and check my work, but yes, that should be how you get roots. Make sense? So just remember, whenever you have a number up, you got to factor that number out. And then whenever you add like that six, 1 16th in there, and you subtract 1 16th, you have to multiply it by that 2 again. Does that make sense?